seeing you out there returning punts. How do, how do you like that role? Uh, I just go back there more so just enhance my you know, ball attacking skills and everything like that. Um, there's a good chance I won't be back there at any point during the season. But, uh, you know, emergency situation, if I need to go back there, I think I can. No. Uh, kind of. Like I said, it's just I'm just trying to develop that skill. Uh, it's more so just helping tracking the ball, putting the balls in the air. Some people get all excited about it, though, from the standpoint they were worried about you putting yourself in jeopardy. You seem to return as much as putting yourself in any more jeopardy than going over the middle. No, not really. I don't really um, understand the concept of that. Any time you put uh, a dynamic player back there, you can change the game, especially on uh, special teams like that. So. I wouldn't really say it's an injury risk. You know, I'm thinking Mecca did it last year. Uh, Garrett has done it. Uh, Jackson has done it. So we've obviously had dynamic players back there. Um, so I wouldn't think it's an injury risk at all. It doesn't sound like you're really lobbying to do it during the season, though. I mean, if I, you know, if I want to, if I, you know, I think Mecca had it last year. I think Mecca's going to do it again this year. Um, I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm back there just for practice. We're all curious on, on where you could get better, or at least I am. Where, where can you get better? Um, you seem to be in here every day. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like you can get better? Uh, there's always room to get better everywhere. Whether that's getting you know, your breaks faster, uh, ball skills. Uh, but I think one thing in particular that I'm kind of you know, focused on is just making plays after the catch. Um, you know, trying to turn you know, five yard catches into 20 or 20 yard catches into 60, things like that. So um, I think that's one thing I'm conscious about doing this next year and practicing for that. Yeah, so much. I, I, I was in the big interview room uh, after the game. Um, I don't, I don't really know. I think, you know, obviously you're just trying to make a play on the football. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's the ref decision like to you know, make that call, whether he thinks it's targeting or not. Uh, it's kind of up to him. It's not, I'm not the one making the call. There was a flag thrown, though, and it was picked up and stuff. But did, did you feel at least it was a personal foul that you were hitting this neck, shoulder, head, neck, and shoulder area? Uh, it's not my decision to make. I'm okay. not the referee out there. Did it fire you up seeing that bad? I think you know just the adrenaline. You're probably in just a moment. You want to go back out there and, uh, and play. But uh, I think I definitely respect the, the trainer's decision to keep me out. Um, it's in the best interest to keep me healthy. Um, you know, like I said, just you know, pass football as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's always you know what if. Uh, I know uh, I can make an impact when, the, you know, when I'm out there on the field. Uh, I would love to be out there, for, especially the whole fourth quarter of the college football playoff game, but um, you know, i got to live with that at this point. Did you recover all right today, Dan? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, just going through concussion protocol, things like that, but I was fine. I know you uh, reacted on Twitter to the night-night photo that was out there. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you saw that? Uh, I just kind of laughed at it. It was kind of funny to me. Um, given the play and, and the circumstance. Um, I don't know exactly if he signed it or if someone signed it for him or you know what the logistics of that is, but I thought it was kind of funny. You had such a big year last year, but uh, you know, Coach Hartline said, you know, anybody with two eyes knows you should have won the Blitnikoff. He says you're, you know, you're still very hungry. What do you still want to get better at? Uh, I think, like I said, there's always room for improvement for everywhere, uh, whether that's you know, ball skills, um, getting out of breaks faster, making everything look the same. Um, there's always you know, room for improvement. You can never be perfect at anything. Um, but like I said, I told him to go. Like, one thing that you know, I'm conscious about is just making plays after the catch. I'm um, trying to extend you know, 10-yard routes or 10-yard catches in the 60-yard you know, plays. Uh, it's one thing I'm conscious about. Does it bother you that you didn't win the bullet in and a lot of people think that you should? Uh, yeah. Uh, I would, yeah, it definitely does bother me. Cause I think that's one of the things you look back on as your you know, college career. You can you know, point to that. I won the best receiver in the country award for that year. Um, I think I definitely deserved it. Uh, I mean, Jalen had a great year as well at uh, Tennessee, but um, yeah, I think I deserved it. When you hear best player in college football, I mean, you've always had high expectations in your life, but coming into this season, what is that? What goes through your mind when you hear that? Uh, me, me, I'm the best. Um, you know, I think you got to go out there and prove it. Um, obviously, last year is last year, and you know, have that, you know. Um, the honor going into the next year is you know it's one thing but you gotta live up to it you know during the season so that's more so I was focused about.
what's it like learning to play with two different quarterbacks? Um, I mean, as a receiver, you got to make things work, no matter who's back there. Um, when I came as a freshman, it was you know, kind of a battle of three. I think Jack Miller, Calvin Court, and CJ. So I kind of learned then, and then it obviously a new battle this year. So uh, as a receiver, just make their job easier. Um, they can throw it to me. I'm going to come down with it. So that's all it is. How do you do that? Though? I mean, yeah, catching the ball helps, but I mean, does it get to be more, are you more precise on different things that you do, or what, what do you do to help? No, no matter who's back there, I try to do the same thing every time. Get open, catch the ball, uh, make a play after the catch. You obviously have that history with Kyle. Is, are we, is that, do you make it too much of that, or is that a real thing when you're out there on the practice field? I think we definitely have connection. Um, going back since we were sophomores in high school. Um, obviously, the more you throw with someone, the more connection you get. And he kind of knows what I'm doing. I know what he's doing. Um, but I've developed that connection, too, with Devin over the time. Um, he's been here last year a little bit. And then, obviously, a couple practices here and in the offseason throwing with him as well. What did you like pitching practice from um, Kyle like in high school? Did you like that um, I think he just he can make every throw. No matter where I'm at on the field, um, I could be, you know, on the opposite opposite side. He could be on a far hash. He can still get the ball there. Uh, whether I'm in the boundary, he can throw the deep ball, intermediate. Um, his timing is very precise. So that's probably the best thing I like about it. Where has he definitely gotten better over the last couple of years since he's been in college? I mean, you're the guy. You're the best barometer for that. Yeah. I mean, you watched him see what he's almost. Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously the arm talent is still there, so it's always there. Um, just more so the mental aspect of the game. He spends a lot of time watching film and just um, trying to anticipate throws. That's probably where he's doing the most. Are, are, you as, are you as eager as anyone to know who the starting quarterback's going to be? Or do you, what's your take on this? Just let it play out? I mean, how, from your vantage point? Yeah, I'm just going to let it play out. Um, obviously, the coaches are going to make that decision. Um, like I said, I'm going to do my job, uh, make it their job easier. Do you, guys, do you see a big mobility difference between the two of those, or is that being overblown? What do you mean? As far as how mobile they are as quarterbacks, how much they'll run as quarterbacks, do you, do you guys see a big difference there? Uh, I mean, I think Devin um, probably has an athletic edge more so than Kyle. Um, but I think, you know, when Kyle needs to run, I think he can run definitely, as you guys see. Like CJ, there's a lot of talk about him being mobile. But then when he needs to run, he can run. I think Kyle can do the same thing. Marvin, there was a lot of talk in the offseason about, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to transfer elsewhere for NIL money? Mm -hmm. What was it like maybe just kind of hearing all that stuff out there? Uh, I just kind of sit back and watch everything play out because actually, obviously I knew what was actually going on. So um, I was reading a bunch of different things. It's kind of more so just a joke to me. Do you, do you have to kind of block a lot of that out, the hype that's around you right now? Yeah, you definitely. Um, I'm always a very humble person, uh, humble guy, humble player. So obviously I know there's a lot more work to be done. Um, obviously, we didn't accomplish any goals we did as a team last year. So, obviously, whatever I did last year wasn't enough. How many people? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I think I'm not ready to, you know, too big hitter or anything like that. How many? How many people reached out to you to see if there was interest? Uh, I don't know. They wouldn't have reached out to me. They would have reached out to, you know, uh, my family members. Yeah. Did, 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 did your family members indicate there were there were people reaching out? <laughs> uh, no. We just uh, focused on Ohio State. I know you did just have an NIL deal announced yesterday or deal Ron McDonald House. Just what, how many op NIL opportunities have you seen come your way as a result of your success last season? Um, I don't know, honestly, because you know, there's an email on my Instagram bio, you know, whatever email. I don't have access to the email. I don't really see. Uh, well, I do have access to it. I don't really go in there and see, you know, what deals um, are offered to me and kind of, you know, leave that to you know, my team and we take care of everything. Do you have, like, an agent in uh, I wouldn't say agent more so my dad, but uh, <laughs> uh, we just, you know we have a good group uh, and the people take care of that. How much does that help to have your dad, somebody who's played on the highest level, to kind of help you manage the spotlight around you? Um, good. I think uh, one thing he always says is focus on football, though. You know, he's going to take care of you know, all the NIL stuff. Um, like you said, first you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. All the NIL stuff is not even possible. You're not performing on the field, so. That's what I really focus on. Does he kind of help you, though, like stay focused on football? Uh, he does, but like I said, me being who I am, I'm always focused on football, you know, regardless. I don't really need someone else to you know, help me with that. It's pretty good. You mentioned Drew and Deion. Obviously, there's some guys that get more opportunity versus some people that don't get more uh, They came in to work. Uh, that's one thing I loved about them. Uh, they always up there with me on the deck machine. Uh, I come in here sometimes, and they're on there, and I'm not even here. So uh, I love that about them. Yeah. Somebody just played. No. <laughs> When you first get here, I know you had a crazy workout that was hilarious just from how much you were mm -hmm. When you first get to college, do you have to learn how to work with that? Typically. Um, 
I think both trying to you know see the older players and see what they're doing and like okay this is what they got um, with the work they're putting in I kind of have to do the same thing but um, I always kind of had it going in coming in here as a freshman so I think something you learn is also you sometimes you just have it. So by what point last season did you maybe start you're saying that it's out there in the industry everybody's out here today but when did you first hear from those young guys maybe join you out here in the work with some of the veterans out there? Uh, well Reese Stockdale has always been out there with me. Um, it's David Johnson. Uh, Mecca comes out there sometimes, Jaden. So it's more than just me out there most times. Um, but I think now I've seen DBs come out there, running backs come out there, kind of seen that this all season. Um, so I guess they kind of look at me and like, okay, it kind of worked for him. So let me kind of keep doing the same work. Was that just leadership problem or just go do it? Again? Yeah, just lead by example. Um, I try to pull some guys with me here and there. I kind of tell them if I'm coming out here. Um, and I'm always welcoming you know, people. It's not just my machine out there. It's all. Couple more questions. Couple more questions for an NIL deal. I mean, uh, did you say about time? I mean, <laughs> what was your response? Uh, you gave them a lot of pub. You give them a lot of pub over there. Yeah. Um, one, I wouldn't really say um, a situation with Monarch. It's not an NIL deal. It's oh, more it so it's a, it's a partnership. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I'm a you know, athlete ambassador for them, so um, it's not an NIL deal. But I think it kind of uh, you know, took its own took its own path. Yeah. What, what does that mean, athlete ambassador? What, what, what does that mean? Um, more so, just you know, I kind of want to be the, you know the example for that brand, or for that company. Um, obviously, the Seeker has helped me a lot. I know my career this far here at Ohio State. So, um, any way I can promote you know the company, that's good. Hey, one other quick, what, what is the best thing? That machine can throw any pass at any time, right? Yep. I mean, what is that like to have that to have that available to you? I know we talked about it with you last year a lot and stuff, mm -hmm. but it is. You know, it's like I, I had C.J. Stroud. I said that machine's going to replace you one of these days. He laughed. Yeah. But what is it like to have that? Uh, you know, it's got you're throwing your fastball. You know? Yeah, I mean, just always access to get you know more touches in when the quarterback you know maybe trying to uh, rest his arm for the next play or something like that. I still want to get my touches in, so I think that's probably the best use I have for it. What do you think of Brian Hartline being uh, promoted to uh, offensive coordinator? Obviously, he's a guy you know very well. He's, yeah. He's still working with the wide receivers, of mm -hmm. course. What do you think of, of uh, the promotion to OC? No, yeah, I'm super excited for him. I'm super excited for the team, super excited for the offense, you know, see where we're going to go. Uh, I think he has an you know, aggressive uh, kind of mindset going into it, so I'm definitely excited to see where we go. You played with Kyle Last McCord in high that. school. Just what is it about Kyle that makes him a great leader? Um, I think he kind of, first off the field, he's somebody you can talk to about anything. Um, he's going to talk to you about anything, just answer your questions. He's going to always help, your, help you and be there for you. So I think that's one thing uh, he's always had since, you know, in high school. And then obviously going to college, he's developed more of a leadership role on the field. And I just calling people out and, you know, just being a quarterback. So um, that's one thing I've seen him grow a lot.